<laughs> I think there's a ghost. <laughs> Amazing. Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we're working on a 1997 Ford F-150. It's a southern truck, two-wheel drive, V8, 4.6 liter. Customer complaint is his battery goes dead in about two days. So it has a significant parasitic draw. So let's start from scratch. I told the shop owner here, when I get here, make sure the battery is fully charged, doors are closed, the key is out, and the hood is open so we can go right for the battery, right for the fuse box. So, um, I'm already a few steps in this diagnosis, but it's getting interesting, so we turn the camera on. So first thing you want to do is hook up an in-series ammeter between one of the battery posts, okay? And right now it's showing 0 0.6 amps. Okay, when I first got here, it was showing 0 0.48, almost half an amp. Um, first thing you want to do is go right to the main power distribution fuse box here under the hood. So all these fuses are hot all the time. Take your voltmeter and do a voltage drop across all the fuses, the maxi fuses and the minis. So the only fuse that had any voltage drop was this fuse 22 maxi fuse 50 amp 0 0.4 millivolts. I think it was 0 0.2 before you know, we open the door. Uh, where does that fuse go? Well, it goes to the interior fuse box. That's why I had to open the door and now the truck is awake. And these Fords are notorious for going to sleep in 45 minutes. So you wanna do whatever it takes to start your diagnosis with everything asleep <clears throat> and then go from there. So we'll see here, fuse 22 this is our main power distribution box. So there's the battery, power distribution box, and we're looking for fuse 22. Fuse 22 goes to junction box fuse and relay panel. Obviously, it's gonna be the hard one. That's where everything lives. So that's this fuse box right here. Okay, so basically open the door. I latched it about half an hour ago, so the truck is trying to go to sleep right now. And I just went ahead and measured the voltage drops on all of these fuses here. So they're labeled 1 through 31, so not too many fuses. And I wrote down all the ones that have a voltage drop. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 fuses in this box that have a voltage drop. So use a voltmeter across every fuse. Fuse 1 has 0 0.4 millivolts. And also note the sign. The sign we'll see is actually pretty important. So make sure you put your leads. I'll keep my right red lead on the right just to remember that. So plus 0.4 millivolts, fuse number 14, minus 0 0.5 millivolts, fuse 15, plus 5.8 millivolts, and then 22, 23, 24 had plus 0.9, plus 1.4, and minus 0 0.4 millivolts. Okay. Once you have these numbers here, go back to the power distribution diagrams for the interior fuse box. So for example, fuse one, 15 amp goes to flasher relay. Okay, we'll note that. And then fuse, oh, let's see here, four, 13, 14 and 15, so fuses 14 and 15 had voltage drops. Fuse 14 goes to our battery saver relay and interior lamp relay. That's to be expected, so there's some draw on that one. And fuse 15, 5 amp, feeds the generic electronic module, the GEM. <laughs> I think there's a ghost. <laughs> Amazing. So anyways, those are hot at all times. Now fuse 20, 
Um, what other ones? 22, 23, and 24. There's 22 and 24. These come from the ignition switch only in the run position. So why the heck would those have any draw on them? 12 volts run. Crazy, right? 22, 24, and then fuse 23 is, uh, oh, let's see, right here. And that feeds all this four wheel drive stuff. But that should only be hot in run. So that's, that's a red flag. Why do we have any voltage drops on fuses when the key is out, the truck's going to sleep? So take a test light from battery ground. Let's just see which fuses are live. So fuses 14 and 15. You know, that's a bright test light. Those are hot at all times. That makes sense. What about fuses 22, 23, and 24? Why do they have voltage drop? There must be voltage on there. <laughs> Dim test light. We're, we're definitely close. It's a dim test light. So let's put a voltmeter on there. I want to see what the voltage is on this, on these three fuses that should be zero. Crazy. So using our trusty little voltmeter, first I'm going to measure battery voltage on one of the live fuses. Okay, about 12 volts. Now let's move to fuse 22, 23, and 24. 5.7 volts. That's why our test light was dim. That one, 5.8 volts. This one, 5.7 volts. So we're on the right track. We heard that weird beep, whatever that thing was. Crazy. Um, how do we determine where this issue is? So Something just clicked. That might have been, yep. So 0 0.46 amps are relay timed out. It's 525, so exactly 45 minutes. Let's measure the voltage across the GEM, across the battery saver relay, and write down the new numbers after the truck is asleep. So is the voltage still here on these fuses? Yes, it is. That's going to be our problem. Uh, let me do the voltage drops in these other fuses. Okay, after redoing all the voltage drops here, by the way, we're down to 0.45. That's where we started. That's when the truck is asleep. The only one of these six fuses that went to zero was number 14, which is, let's see here, fuse 14 battery saver relay and interior lamp relay. So that relay indeed turned off. However, fuse number 15 still has a 5.8 millivolt draw. And these three fuses all have the same draw and fuse number one. So our problem is going to be somewhere in that generic electronic module. Now this truck does not have four wheel drive. So I don't know why um, it would beep like that but it must beep for some reason. And how is their voltage on the fuses that are only on the run circuit? Let's see what they feed and if there's a back feed through one of the modules. Oh, by the way, the shop owner tells me he replaced the GEM for some power window issues, um, some other electrical issues, and he was like, well, it had a parasitic draw before, and I was hoping the new GEM would take care of everything. So now everything works, but we still have a parasitic draw, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so we're worried about three fuses here, 22, 23, and 24. Fuse 24 goes to function selector switch. That would be the HVAC system. And that basically, if it's in the off, it should not be connected. If it's on, it should power up the blower relay. Okay, so our HVAC is off. So basically right now I'm wondering what is back feeding Because two of these are positive, one of them is negative. So where is the current going? Is it going back on one of the fuses and then 
you know, feeding the other two at six volts, really crazy. So let's pull fuse number 24. That's the one that feeds the function selector switch. That would be the third one down in this row. So I'm just gonna do that. Keep in mind, we're still at, we still have our dim test light. So, 22, 23, 24. Let's unplug it. Okay. Our battery draw is now 0.38. And I want to see which one of these pins is dim. Uh, okay, that one right there is dim. That one right there is not. So the left hand side here is all tied together. The right hand side is the load, whatever the fuse feeds. So I'm going to note that our current is not coming from this fuse and back feeding. It's coming from here and feeding that fuse. For whatever reason, it should not. Now that's not the issue, but that was a little part of the load. So let me write that down. All right, next fuse I want to pull is fuse number 22 that goes to our airbag diagnostic monitor and our passive deactivation pad mo module. I don't know what passive deactivation module is, is it? This thing, maybe, is it missing? Maybe the dash is off, no, it's still there. And then, if nothing changes, we still have that six volts, it's gotta be fuse 23, so something from here, back feeding, fuse 23. Like the trailer tow battery charge relay, perhaps. Let's, uh, let's fu pull fuse number 22. So remember, we're at 0 0.35 amps. Pull number 22, see what happens. Point two three. We still have a dim light. Still have a dim light. Dim light there. Dim light there, not on here, okay. Let's write that down, 0.23. There's something clicking when I, when I touch that, right? So that beep that you hear over there, it goes away when I pull fuse 22. That would be the airbag diagnostic monitor and the passive deactivation pad module. So, interesting. And we still have six volts on there and something clicks when we touch that fuse that should be not powered up. So that fuse, what could be feeding number 23? We don't have a transfer case. We do have a flasher relay. We don't have 4x4 center axle disconnect. Do we have a trailer tow battery charge relay? Let's look up trailer tow battery charge relay, see if there's anything funky going on with that. Whenever you have an, a voltage that's somewhere in the middle, suspect green crusties because relays either on or off, right? If there's some green crusties, it can be, the voltage can be somewhere in the middle. So let's, uh, Let's see if that could be back feeding this fuse. Um, let, let's just pull it. I mean, it's not supposed to be powering anything up. So fuse number 23, here we go. We still have 0.23. So fuse number 23 is actually did not have any voltage drop across it once I removed 22 and 24. Keep that in mind. Do we still have, we still have that six volts on there. Do we still have six volts on here? OK, 
okay we have six volts on here let me get a better back probe and see if the other fuses are not at six volts if this is the only pin that's at six volts that's going to be our problem that's what we need to chase so basically with all 22 23 and 24 removed the only pin that stays at six volts is the pin on fuse 23 on the right hand side now i can prove it right there that's the only pin that stays hot all the other ones are not powered up anymore so basically the current was going from here feeding whatever's on you know this pin and also this is connected to the right side of fuse 22 and the left side of fuse 24 and then whatever that fuse was feeding so every time we pull the fuse the draw goes away this draw goes away pull this fuse that depowers these two pins and we still have a quarter amp draw okay so next step is to see why this pin right here on fuse 23 has six volts when it should not and why it makes something click in here again we have flasher relay trailer tow battery charge relay I mean you could turn the flashers on see what happens to it doesn't change there it is 0.23 okay so let's do a little more digging so just to clarify between these three fuses this pin right now is at 6 volts if you put the fuse in 23 it'll power up the right pin on 22 and the left pin on 24 and you put those fuses in that increases the parasitic drain so right now this is at 6 volts there's a quarter amp parasitic drain we need to figure out why this is at 6 volts that's the weird thing now is it on the feed side or the load side I mean that's whatever um, what I mean by that is the feed side is the junction box you know ignition key or whatever and then the loads are on the other side of the fuse so we're worried about fuse 23 is the six volts here or is it here well considering that we know that this pin is tied to this pin and this pin that must be the junction box side and whatever you know whatever when you put the fuse in when it connects the two pins this is the load this is the load and this 6 volts is the load on that fuse 2310 amp <clears throat> so let's go to we don't have any of this stuff we have a flasher relay and we have a trailer tow battery charge relay let's power distribution box right relay flasher relay block power distribution box trailer tow battery charge relay let's find that relay and see what is going on there if we pull that would it you know would we not see the six volts on fuse 23 anymore let's uh, let's see what's going on so trailer tow battery charge relay we're seeing six volts right here how is that possible it must be coming from the tow charge relay let's pull that and see if our draw disappears that's safe to do it's not going to wake anything up and that lives right there trailer tow battery charge relay um, power distribution box relay let's see if we can find this I guess we can go to components locations yeah let's, let's see if we can find that aha this is what they must mean there's another little box to the side Tape shut. Okay, here we go. So one, two, three, four, five, missing slot there. Uh, hmm. Fog lamp trailer. 
that's the right one. All right, so we have our quarter amp draw. This indeed is the trailer tow battery charge relay. I just wasn't looking at the diagram correctly. This one right here, we don't have ABS or fog lights. So let's just pull it and see what happens to our parasitic draw. So 0.23 amps, I'm gonna pull this relay. Boom, <laughs> 11 milliamps. Let's see if we still have six volts on. Put all these fuses in. So, so why is that still hot right there? So I can't explain that. But we went down to 11 milliamps. Pretty crazy. So we're on the right track for sure. And this, that would be the load side of the relay. Let's, let's do some voltage measurements here and see what we have on the load and the control side of this battery trailer charge relay. Okay, here we go. Test light. So, on the load side of the trailer tow charge battery relay, we should have 12 volts hot at all times on pin 30. So it's gonna be either this one, yep. That one goes to back to the trailer connector. That's the load side, that looks fine. Test light the battery ground. Now, on the control pins, there's our weak voltage, six volts, and then the other side should be a good ground. So, six volts right there, we can prove that with, uh, with a voltmeter. Let me just hook up my test light to battery positive. So test light from battery positive, if it finds a ground, test light will light up. So that one was weird. This one is a good ground. So on the control side pin, we have that mystery six volts. Let's get a voltmeter and just make sure. Make sure that we do indeed have six volts on there. Where's my voltmeter? Okay, so with the voltmeter on this pin, we're at 12.1 volts. Now, if I take my test light to battery ground, and go to that pin, we're at seven volts. So it's a soft short to ground. If it was a full short to ground, my test light would light up bright and it would not pull that voltage down. So what I'm gonna do is rig up a low current test light to that pin so it's dim and then we're gonna wiggle wiggle some wires so the problem is going to be fuse 23 there's splice 228 white blue white light blue wire trailer tow battery charge relay now if we look at fuse 23 see right here it also feeds the flasher relay. Could the problem be on the flasher relay? So we would have to go to the blower flasher relay block, unplug that, and see if you know the problem could be coming from here. There's splice 228. We don't have transfer case, we don't have this four-wheel drive stuff, so two possibilities, or somewhere on the wiring, uh, back feeding and making this wire short a soft short to battery positive. Now, we unplugged this relay, we still have, this wire is still at, whatever, soft 12 volts. Barely lights, you know, test lights dim. So maybe we should go to this flasher relay, blower flasher relay block, see where that is. Unplug the flasher relay, see what happens. 
So uh, I'm looking at the diagram of this blower flasher relay. It's not a regular relay. It has hot and run pin, hot at all times pin, and then a ground pin, and then 12 volts, 12 volt pulse turn, 12 volt pulse hazard. So interesting. Could this be back feeding? soft 12 volts back to fuse 23 that's very possible because it's not a regular relay it's some kind of smart thing so let's I'm, I'm going right for this blower relay uh, fuse 23 here's the layout so if this thing is back feeding on this tree and then it's powering up you know sending power through the fuse back feeding there sending power to the trailer tow battery charge relay that's turning on that's drawing so we need to find this blower flasher relay block and it's right down here kind of by the driver's foot right foot and it looks like blower relay flasher relay but it's not going to be a simple really like that even a five pin I don't think it it provides a pulse you know it's special and it has a constant battery feed all the time from fuse number one yes fuse number one did have a draw which was weird okay we're exactly on the right track very easy check now boom fuse number one that's <laughs> That's starting to make sense. Let's pull fuse number one, plug everything else back in, and see if our draw goes away. Then we'll go for this flasher relay, and I think that's gonna be our problem. Okay, th th this is pretty cool. All right, so the test lay is on there. It's about seven volts, it's dim. Now, let's see what the voltage drop is on fuse number one. That's the hot at all times power to this special blower relay and if you remember we heard, heard clicking behind the dash when we we're playing around with the test light so let's measure the voltage across fuse 15 0 0.4 millivolts all right I'm gonna pull that make sure it doesn't power up anything else Let's just go back to fuse number one, uh, power distribution. Make sure that's the only thing it powers up. Yep, sure enough, the only thing fuse number one feeds, 15 amp, is the flasher relay. So let's yank it out of there. Boom. I think I heard something click. Let's look at our test light. Ooh, that's still dim. We're down to nine milliamps. If I take my test light away, yeah, we're down to nine milliamps. So how is that still powered up? I thought I was on the right track, dang. <laughs> so if we put this relay back in here, I'm pretty sure it's still gonna click. Yep. Ah, so close. So I'm assuming now the power is not coming from this flasher relay because see G200. So we basically removed fuse one, removed the constant battery power, and now it shouldn't be connected to anything at all. Right, and we still have a soft short to ground on fuse 23 on this white and blue wire. That sucks. 